This is Mark Summers from Summers Technical Services. I'm going to do a quick video this morning, not going into much detail, but just give an overall view of weldments and using those weldments to do finite element analysis using SOLIDWORKS simulation and using beam elements. So let's uh, take a look at a little weldment here created earlier. Uh, it's very useful, it's very uh, functional because we can use a 3D, one single 3D sketch to define the paths of my extrusions and uh, mostly you want to use geometric constraints to tie things down and then dimensional constraints to get your dimensions like you want and that sketch will define the paths of those extrusions. And these extrusions are defined with what's called a library feature part and it's nothing more than a sketch and it's got configurations that give you naming conventions that can be used in your cut list on your drawings later on. So you just draw that shape and use that in creating your weldment. So going back to the weldment here, you can see I've got, uh, it creates a cut list automatically and it uses those descriptive characteristics and the properties for each one of those library feature parts to populate the naming on the cut list and that will help you when you make your drawing in your cut list and you can roll that up into a bomb. You can also export that data to an Excel spreadsheet to use for purchasing purposes. So a little bit more on the weldments. You can see here I've got uh, this particular extrusion here follows the same path as this one, but I wanted this one to be offset up a little bit. And it's easily done by taking advantage of some functionality in the weldment command. So if I want to do the same thing to this one over here, I'll just select it, edit the feature, and I can do things like flipping the extrusion about horizontal and vertical axes, turn that on and off. And I can also select this locate profile, and that'll let me select different points to be the uh, center starting point of the extrusion. And so I can shift it up, down, left, and right, and I can flip it mirror around the horizontal and vertical axes. So that's useful. The other thing that's interesting is these extrusions, I can also use uh, just, I can do sheet metal parts, and I can make uh, them part of my cut list if I want to, and uh, the simulation module will recognize the difference between sheet metal parts and beam elements, and for the structural members made with the weldment command, it converts those to 1D beam elements in the simulation, and any sheet metal parts, it converts those to plate elements. Okay, so since we've got a weldment manufacturing model here that can be used to document our design and get our parts purchased and assembled and welded together, I'm going to use the same manufacturing model to do the simulation. So I have to recreate another model and that way if this model gets updated my simulation will update as well. So to start the simulation, I'll click on my simulation tab here, start a new study, and say OK. And since the materials were all defined in the manufacturing model, all I have to do in the simulation model is just to apply that same material. So the materials were applied in the manufacturing model to get the weights and center gravities correct, but I can use that same material to run simulation, just apply that material that's already been defined. So now I'll move again, moving left to right here, I'll do uh, some fixed geometry. I'll do an immovable constraint on these four corner nodes. And you can see the simulation module knows that these aren't solid elements. It's not going to make tetrahedrons to do a 3D mesh. It knows they're beam elements, and so it uses nodes that define those, and it's going to simplify, speed up my calculation process. So those are my fixtures. And now I want to put some loads on here. I'll just put a vertical force and add it to these nodes here. Those two, those two, those two, those two. And I want to put a vertical load on here. For demonstration purpose, I need to give an orientation. So I'll select that face there to orient the load. And I want to do a force that is perpendicular, reverse direction. And I don't know, a thousand pound load at each node. 
we'll give that a shot just to give us a number in here. Okay, so now that I've got loads on there, I've got my uh, fixtures defined, and so now I can just run the study. And it runs very quickly because these are just 1D beam elements. So I can quickly get my results. There's my deflection curve, excuse me, my stresses. There's my deflections. And once I look at these and decide that they look reasonable, I can start looking at some uh, exporting some of this data. So I can I can show the results in shaded plots and animations like I can with my 3D elements. But I can also interrogate and find out beam forces and displacements under the results advisor. So I'll list the stresses and displacements using the results advisor. If I want to look at displacements, like I can look at the uh, vertical direction displacements in the units that I want. And under advanced options, I can ask for extremes or I can also ask for a range, 369 nodes. And if I like that, I can say OK and I get a list of all the displacements. And if I want to save those out to an Excel file, I can do that and interrogate that with uh, other analysis programs to do some AISC structural code calculations or whatever program I want to use external. I can export all those to a file I can read in Excel. So anyway, not much detail, but overall summary of how to do weldments. There's some functionalities of weldments and also how to use a weldment manufacturing model for use in simulation module to do stress and deflection analysis. So that'll do it for this video. Come back often to my YouTube page at Summers Technical Services for additional videos in the future.